Hi everybody, this is Rebecca, who you just heard from, um, and I'm Alison Hardacre. We've known each other a couple of months now, which is yes. really good. I am so excited about what Beck is doing. So tell me all about Bahama Bell. What is it? So basically, Bahama Bell is an organic range of skincare, a sea salt scrub for face and body, and it bridges the gap between tween skincare and adult skincare. So teenagers are increasingly becoming aware of the importance of skincare, but then there's nothing targeted at them, specifically their age group, that they can use. So if you're like me, I spend $180 for three months on a cleanser and a moisturizer, but then my peers are nowhere near going to spend that. So I decided, you know, let's do something and create something that they are accessible to and will understand and relate to. Wow, that's really good. I mean, it's such a big step to start this. So how did you think about how to manufacture the actual products? So, well, I, I was still trying to work out Pythagoras and <laughs> algebra and stuff like that. So I, I said to my parents, you know, I want to start this. And then they were sort of like, OK, like, whatever, go do it yourself. So then I was looking online, like ingredients and things like that. And then I said, oh, I'll make it at home. And that obviously wasn't going to work. So I just researched different people to contact. And I found a guy who could source the ingredients. And then we collaborated to create this scrub. So yeah. Oh, fantastic. So have you tested it on yourself? Yes, my friends, myself, we all love it. It works, I hope. You obviously can see that it works. But yeah, I've always had good skin because I swim in the ocean. And then my peers would ask me, you know, oh, what do we do? Because they'd be using things that their mum used, but that's anti-aging. And obviously, for teen skin, that's not a very good mix. So, I, yeah, the idea just came from that. Well, oh, fantastic. I mean, obviously, you've been doing this for a little bit now. But yep. what do you say would be the biggest learning you've had um, throughout the journey? Um, well, obviously... At my age, I don't know anything about starting a business. So just reaching out to people and asking them for help, literally calling them, emailing until you get a response. Otherwise, it's just going to be an idea sitting there. Mm. Oh, that's, that's probably the case for any startup, really. Yeah. Definitely. Um, I know you're planning on launching it sometime soon. So tell me about your plans for launch. So by the end of next month, we're hoping to launch the online shop where you can purchase the products. And yeah, I'm excited about that. It's really soon. But in this type of business, you almost have to expect setbacks or knockbacks. Like, OK, what's the thing that's going to set me back now? You always have to be ready for those. Well, tell me about a setback that you've had and how you've dealt with it. So I first contacted the manufacturer, and I saved up all this money, you know, dog walking and tutoring and things like that. And then um, I contacted him, and we made the first set of cleanser and moisturizer, because that was the original idea. And then after a while, there was no contract, obviously, because I was 13 at the time, so I had no idea what to do. And then there was no contact from him, so after I had no idea what was in this sample that I had at home. And I had no idea where to turn, so I just said, OK, you know what, this is enough. I'm not doing this. It's too hard. So then after that, I contacted a few larger already established companies like Mecca Cosmetica, Coral Organics, which is Miranda Kerr's range, and met with them and said, you know, there's a real gap in the market for a youth or teen line. And they were like, yeah, yeah, like, that's OK. But I don't think they believed in someone so young. And then I was like, OK, this idea is never going to get off the ground. But then I um, reached out to Nicole Jacobs, who's a buyer's advocate, and her and her husband are in the tech world. So then they sort of gave me the steps to go from A to B and what to do next. So, yeah. Wow. And so I know we've been talking about your plans for packaging and launching, etc. And uh, I run a tech business, but your knowledge as a digital native is amazing because you, all, you know so much about just how to get the YouTube um, connectors and influencers. It's, it's um, a totally different way of running a business, and more and more younger people should be doing it. And I suppose that's, that's a question that I've always had. Um, as when you were introduced, you know, they said you were the youngest speaker ever at Pause Fest. What would you say are some of the benefits of being a young person running your business? And what would you say are some of the, the 
sort of negatives that you might have experienced? Well, the positives are obviously it's for teenagers created by teenagers. So therefore, I'm the best person who knows how to get, you know, what's on trend and what works and what doesn't because I am the target market and so are my friends. But the negatives are definitely the age because nobody believes in you because you're 16. There are startups at 30 that people are still like, like, oh, should you be doing this? I'd go to barbecues or talk to my fr parents' friends and things like that, and they'd be like, are you sure this is a good idea? And I'd be like, yeah, I want to do this, but there's always that set of doubts, so the age is the biggest thing. But also, I think that naivety opens up to new creativity and Sorry. limits and stuff like that. I think um, one of the things I've been impressed with is obviously you've had those, those setbacks and those negative comments that we all have, but you've gone out and you've actually spoken to people like Miranda Kerr, you've gone and got mentors like Nicole Jacobs. How did you actually go about trying to contact Miranda Kerr? Oh, that was a hard one. Um, she randomly followed me on Instagram, just randomly, and then I got in contact with like her manager, so I'm like a professional, like. Instagram stalker, but then, yeah, I just, persistence, honestly, and then she did an event in Sydney, and we met there. Wow. And then Nicole Jacobs, so she was on um, the block, wasn't she? Yeah, yeah, so I was sort of at my wit's end. I didn't know where to turn or who to turn for to help, and then um, I saw her, and I was like, okay, so she's obviously business savvy and things like that, and was just hoping that she could just outline or help me understand the process of getting from an idea to a real life concept. Okay, question, how did you come up with the name? And also, because I know we've talked a little bit about packaging, yes. tell me a little bit about the packaging, because it's not just about what's in no. the, the container, it's about everything as well. So it's all influenced by the like quintessential Australian beach girl, like she's just effortlessly, like walks out of the beach and she's glowing, so it's all about that. So it's all blue and white, and I grew up by the beach and on the sea, so Bahama Bell, like beauty of the Bahamas, so beauty of the beach. So it's all influenced by sea and sea salt and things like that. Okay, brilliant. Um, I mean, I know you've been doing this for a little while now, but based on your experience, what would you say is the biggest piece of advice you'd have for entrepreneurs, be they in high school or um, older than that? Definitely to just do it because you're never going to be, you're never going to have the right amount of money, the right mentor, the right time. There's never a right time or place. So to just do it. And I think if you have a really positive and accept the fact that you're going to fail, you, you have to fail 10,000 times before you get one thing right. Yep. So just sort of having that resilience and like persistence, I think that that opens up more opportunities coming to you. Oh, that's so true. It's so true for every entrepreneur. Yeah. Um, I know we've talked about this in the past. I think um, often there's a difference between theory and practice. Yeah. And so what you might learn in school or uni could be different. How have you handled that when somebody tells you something about marketing and you know because you've actually been doing it? How do you handle that when you know that it's different? So yeah, I study business management at school and they'll, you'll open the book and they'll say, okay, to be successful you have to do X, Y and Z, but in the real world it's nothing like that. So I think real life experience is really the only way in this sort of business to learn. You can't read it up or look at it in a book, so you have to actually go out and do the things, as you said. Fantastic. So what are your plans for Bahama Bell? You're going to launch and yes. then what are you thinking after that? So hopefully just gain the online presence of the online store, get it out to teenagers and beautiful girls everywhere and really sell that Australian beach girl, you know, glowing radiance. And then my international and love to be stocked in like David Jones or something to make it a little more um, accessible for people to really try and sample. Fantastic. Thank you so much. We're going to open it. Oh my gosh, there's so many people here now. We're going to open it up to questions. So I'm sure a lot of people will have the Slido app. So submit your questions online and uh, then we can go from there. Um, while we're waiting for some questions, um, quick question. You're, not in, you're in year 12 this year? Yes. So have you taken lunch break off or have you taken a day <laughs> off or how's that working? Oh, the school's been really supportive, so today I got a break off. I wish I could come to pause 
all the other days, but yeah, everyone asks how do you manage, you know, the school load and this, but I think like anything, managing career or family or whatever it is, if you want to do it, you'll find the time to do it and prioritise, so yeah. That's brilliant. Well, I'm trying to work out how to use the Slido app. So Tamara asks, you've already had some great mentors and connections. Are there any other people that you'd like to, um, to be introduced to or to meet in your journey? Um, well, I think just in general, entrepreneurs who have been through things and sacrificed a lot. I, I just I had a breakfast this morning, thanks to Pause, and I was just meeting so many like-minded people. But if I had to say one, it might be... Um, that's a really difficult question. Um, well, Miranda Kerr was the top of the list, so I've done that, but maybe to m learn more from her because she's transferred from, you know, a face to this business and inspired young girls. So that's probably be one to learn more from rather than just propose an idea to collaborate. Oh, that's good. Jason's asked, um, in terms of your school friends, are they ambitious and how do you manage that? Do you find that you're gravitating to people who are more ambitious than other people your age, or how are you managing all of that? That's a really good question. At school, some of the people, or I go to an all-girls school, so some of them were a bit weirded out by the concept that this type of thing could actually be done. So they don't really understand it. Whereas there's other girls who are one of my best friends, she's about to run in the Commonwealth Games, so, wow. you know, there's all different types of people, but sometimes even just the concept entrepreneur, I remember in a year 10 careers interview, they said, okay, what do you want to be? And I said, an entrepreneur. And I remember my deputy principal saying, oh no, you can't do that, you need at least 20,000 to start up. And I was affected by it, but so, even the term or just the concept of starting your own business is really unorthodox to people. So, mm. but yeah, I generally do like Nicole Jacobs and the mentors that I have, I just feed off their energy and always like learning from them. So, that's great. Uh, Sylvia asks, How big is your team? And how are you bringing in more people? Is it just you? It's just me at the moment, and unwillingly, my parents who have been really supportive. But um, there's a couple of little, like at school, the design team, they sort of help with the concept. So yeah, it's just really people who are interested in supporting me rather than the idea because with investors and things like that, they invest in the person, not the idea. Yeah. We've also had a question. Uh, what are your plans for tertiary education? Um, I always wanted to study like law or some form of law, but then, with this, I don't know, I'm thinking more to study like the business side of um, marketing and things like that to not only help, um, you know, big companies, but sort of help my own knowledge and add to that from what I've already learned. Mm. Uh, I think that that leads on to a question that we've also had. How do we as a society make it cool and trendy to be an entrepreneur <laughs> rather than not nerdy and dorky? Well, with events like this, and I think just having people in the public eye that make it known that, you know, it's not weird or you're not strange. I remember when I first announced it to my friends or like my Instagram page, I was nervous because I was a bit embarrassed by the term. But I think if you just really be honest and open that people are a little bit more respective or welcoming of the idea. Mm, that's true. I mean, so, I think we'll always have naysayers. But, yeah. Uh, Frank asks, Sonia asks, how do you stay positive? Um, that's really difficult. Well, after all the setbacks, I think it's just something that you have to do if you want to move forward because it's easy for someone to just have an idea and go, oh, but I actually have to go out and meet people. Like, I'm so shy. But in this type of business, you have to go out and be confident and meet people. So if you choose to be negative, your idea is not going to go anywhere. Oh, absolutely. I think that's the same for everybody. Yeah. One of the questions here is really um, pertinent for everybody. I mean, obviously, you've got the product, but you always have to be thinking about marketing and distribution. Yes. So can you talk more about how you're going to market it? 
So I'm really lucky with my marketing. I had a few family friends. One was on Australia's Next Top Model and one is on YouTube with over like 100,000 subscribers. So I've been really lucky that they were the core like um, testers of the product and really loved it. And I said, you know, you don't have to promote it, but if you do, you have this amazing platform and this amazing voice. And they didn't start. They were on a modeling show or on YouTube. So these days with social media and all these accessible apps, it's much easier for startups to gain connections and, you know, techniques in marketing without having to sacrifice big amounts of finance. That's incredibly true. I mean, we have actually a question here um, about, you know, you started this concept when you were 13 um, and it's been a couple of years while you've been developing it. How much money would you say that you've had to invest in developing it? Um, I've been really lucky with birthday money and things like that, but maybe around five to 6,000 because obviously it's organic, so outsourcing the ingredients, if they're, it's all Australian made, but organic is much more expensive and dearer to support. Mm. I, I think um, it's, organic is also really important in the skincare range because so yes. many people care about that now. Yeah. Um, we've talked a little bit about school. Uh, one of the questions was, were there any teachers at school that just got it? Did they just get the, that you're going to do this? Did they, are they really, really supportive or have they been kind of a bit bemused even? Um, a lot of them have, well, my business teacher just keeps telling me, like, read the book, read the textbook, but I sort of have to explain to them that once you actually go out and do the things, you realise that all the things that people try to tell you are irrelevant unless they've done it themselves. Mm -hmm. So they've tried to be positive, but then again, there's always that stigma of, you know, failure and... I think they're just trying to accept the reality that someone so young actually has the initiative to go and do something like this, so, yeah. Well, Philippe asks on that basis, you know, what are your plans for the next five years? How are you going to manage tertiary doing this business and where do you want to take the business? Well, I think I've managed it enough, well, and well enough until now, and as I said before, it's just a will. You will make time, you'll prioritise and do what you have to do in order to achieve things. So hopefully in five years I have an online presence of over 300,000 across all social media platforms and um, the online business is, you know, gaining traction every day. So that'd be the ultimate dream. Do you have, here's another question, do you, how do you spend your free time if you have any? <laughs> um, swimming, actually. I used to swim for Victoria, so, but yeah, that sort of just clears my brain between school and the business, so it's a great way to look, stay fit, but also, you know, keep me sane. Um, we've talked a bit about school. Have you inspired any other students to consider, to be an entrepreneur or to consider becoming an entrepreneur? I don't think um, necessarily inspired in entrepreneurship, but just to be doing what you want to do. There's um, a young girl, she's in year eight, so she's around 14 years old, and she's always wanted to dance. So now she's actually enrolled in this like outside co-curricular school. So I don't think it, it's just inspiring to take the jump from, okay, I want to do this, now I'm actually doing it. So yeah. Um, we've talked about the future for the business. Um, and you know, one of the things that's surprising for people is that skincare for teenagers is not just about clearer cell. It's yeah. not just about pimples. It's about actual skincare, hydration, etc. What are your plans for branching out? You know, where are you wanting to go beyond this? And um, do you see that there are other areas that would complement your business and your brand? Also, because it is a scrub, I initially wanted to do cleanser and moisturiser and toner. So hopefully, this is successful enough to enable me to not only financially support but through the team of like the fans of the brand and the girls and the community, they can sort of feed off each other and tell me what they're, you know, looking for other than just a one-step system. Mm. And one final question, um, and this is something that probably a lot of entrepreneurs have grappled with, what would you say is the worst piece of advice that you've had? 
Oh, that's a tough question. Um, I'm not sure. That's really difficult. Probably to... Um, I don't know. Well, what's the best piece of advice that you've had then? Just to go out and do it. I remember there was this girl who had a jewellery line and she waited until she finished uni, until she had enough money, but still there was all these little extra things that you don't understand until you actually be proactive and do it. So that's probably the best advice to just do it. And the worst, I don't know, maybe to not stress out because there's always something to stress about in life. So yeah. Well, stress is a part of growing the business. Yeah, of course, definitely. And you learn from those experiences of how to deal with and adapt to stressful situations. So yeah. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you, everybody. And thanks, Rebecca. Thank you.